backhand, like a round back. Good boy. Oh, what's that ball? Look at it. Because I enjoy tennis and I love tennis. I play it all the time. I can do it and um, I can do most of the shots and everything. If it's all of this year, I will play all of this year. Apart from their love of tennis, these kids have a bond. They were born with spina bifida and have had surgery regularly since they were two days old. It's a constant battle, but talk to them and you'll find the good days are good, the bad days are bad, and they're just kids with wheelchairs for legs. This one, Melissa, take your time, watch it very carefully. And again, this one. The coordinator of sports activities for many disabled children, Diane Taylor, has been a paraplegic since a car accident about 15 years ago. Good hit, that was right on the racket. But the kids are serious when it comes to their favourite shot. Forehand. Forehand. Do you have a favourite shot? Yep. What's that? A very hard one. Do you have a favourite shot? Yeah, me backhand. Backhand? Yeah. Everyone, everyone likes your forehand so far. <laughs> Why do you like your backhand? I know, I just find I can hit more with your backhand. Fun is an integral part of their Tuesday nights. They're not here to conquer Wimbledon, but one day they might just try. Bodyboarding has been struggling to gain respect in surfing circles for more than 10 years. It's improved a lot over the last few years. When I first started, you know, there was a, a lot of rivalry and stuff. But, but now I think people just respect, um, you know, how people surf in the water and their abilities. At Lake Macquarie's Redhead Beach this weekend, the bodyboarders are out to prove they have some special water skills. 200 competitors, including 48 pros, are competing in the Northern Region titles in the Australian Grand Slam. The winners progressing to the national titles in Ballina in April. Top seed Steve McKenzie already has four Aussie titles under his belt and he'll be fighting against world champion Port Macquarie's Michael Eppleston for the money. Mackenzie comes from a proud surfing background. His sister is the world amateur champ in riding surfboards. She's looking forward to a good year on the Pro Tour. Mate, it must be in the blood. Oh, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> the bodyboarding event continues over the weekend with finals on Sunday.
Nation Day has run up behind a wall of horses in the straight preeminence at long odds. The leader, his little Navy Seal, gobbling him up. Navy Seal has raced past preeminence. Coronation Day's in awful bother. Warwick Farm's going to bring him undone. And another one for Dittman. Navy Seal, the Pony Express, races away to win the Hobartville Kingston. Nine to two, Navy Seal, ten to one and fifteen to one. Unplaced favourite at five to four on Coronation Day. At Caulfield, the Futurity stakes over 1,400 metres and another great horse got the money. Bellingen has outgrown its 20-metre public pool, according to fundraising organiser Richard Fisk. Last night, an auction of sporting memorabilia raised about $7,000 for a new pool for Bellingen. The whole community of Bellingen got together. We've had support from more than 100 of Australia's top sportsmen. And hopefully in the near future, Bellingen will have an Olympic swimming pool. It's something desperately that the kids of the town need. Richard Fisk says the town's high school and primary school children need an Olympic pool for training and school carnivals. At present, the kids must use the Olympic pools at Sawtell or Coffs Harbour. At the auction last night, the most coveted items were a cricket bat signed by the Australian team and Kieran Perkins' autographed swimming cap and T-shirt. Each item sold for $500. The raising of the items for the sports auction came from a whole host of people in the town using their contacts and it's interesting to note, not one sportsman in Australia knocked us back to... The Bellingen Olympic Pool Committee's target is $270,000. So far it's raised $90,000, about 60000 of which was donated by the local council. Richard Fisk says the committee's confident of raising the money required. Jane Anderson, NBN News. Port Macquarie's Lighthouse Beach played host to 15,000 spectators for the finals of the two-day carnival. Clubs from the south coast to the Queensland border took part, most taking away a fair clutch of medals. A one-kilometre stretch of sand became a parade ground for the march past. Sawtell judged the winner. Ships of the Desert made a surprise visit to the seaside, bearing the junior lifesaver of the year, Michelle Boive, from Tathra on the south coast. Swansea Belmont's Adrian Tobin dominated in the under-14s Ironman, swim and board events. Port Macquarie's Jason Samuelson came second in the Ironman. In the under-14 Diamond Lady, Brooke Castle from North Entrance came in first. Clubmate Daniel Starr won the boys' under-13s Ironman. Melanie Mitchell from Wombrell, the Diamond Lady. These truckies were Sunday drivers with a mission, as more than 160 rigs set off along the New England Highway just north of Newcastle. Stretching seven kilometres long, the convoy eventually ended at Spears Point Park in Lake Macquarie, the truckies hailing from near and far. Cairns, Orange, uh, there's some up from Wollongong, uh, Gloucester, Stroud and of course the Valley. Organised by the Warners Bay Lions Club, the event raised more than $3,000 for children with cancer, the money to be shared by Camp Quality and Ronald McDonald House. And it wasn't only these children that learned some valuable lessons. Couldn't wish a better cause. Top cause. Excellent cause. Mark Sargent wasted no time letting the Dragons know that although it was a trial game, he wasn't going to take it easy. Saints second rower David Barnhill replied with a series of high tackles, the first on David Mullane. Brad Godden copped the treatment next. 
A few minutes later, Paul Harrigan wore one and he wasn't too happy. Barnhill was called out for each tackle and had a penalty given against him but wasn't sent off. Knights coach David Waite says his players were annoyed they weren't being protected under the new head high rule. My drama is the fact that they were told they were going to be sent off. Now if, if it's well, well and good to say this is what's going to happen to you if you do it, the drama is if they don't do it, uh, where's the consistency? The high tackle on Harrigan did spur the Knights on and they threw everything at the Dragons in the last few minutes to go in for another try to seal the match 14-10. It's the last hit out the team will have before the Winfield Cup starts in two weeks. Waite says they managed to clear up a few defence problems that cost them the game against Canberra in the Challenge Cup. The fact that uh, St George had a lot of trouble breaking the line was, was very, very pleasing. The two tries came from two handling errors really so we're fairly happy with that aspect of the, of the game. The Knights now have two weeks to rest up before they meet East in the first Winfield Cup round. These are the first pictures of the new Explorer trains. The machines Bruce Baird hopes will encourage a resurgence in rail travel. And we're following the European trend where they went through their reforms, introduced new trains and the patronage went up. People went back to rail and we're expecting that here. The carriages feature a new buffet service, aircraft style reclining seats and air riding suspension. Each train will have a sleeper carriage specially designed to cope with high speeds. It's the first uh, sleeper car uh, built in New South Wales uh, for 30 years, so that uh, we're very pleased to see it on the track again. It's a new level of comfort, we've got new bogies and uh, I'm sure the people are going to enjoy the night's rest. The first trains will be ready for trials in May, then the new sleepers will be in services to the north coast in late July. A daily daylight XPT is expected to run between Sydney and Grafton by November and the public will have a say about train timetables. Through the local members we plan to talk to various community groups and get their uh, comment and input in terms of the type of timetable that they would like to see. So that uh, when we finally come up with it I'm sure that uh, not everybody's going to be pleased but generally it will be in line with what the community expects. An explanation for the kill that saw thousands of dead fish washing up along the coast of Newcastle may well be the one that gets away. We've been fishing here a lot of years in this port and, and we've never ever seen this happen before. Local fishermen were looking for answers today. There were precious few. Fisheries, CSIRO, Environment Protection Authority, University and Water Board tests have all failed to point the finger, but have established the fish died from toxic poisoning. Fishermen remain suspicious of the Burwood Beach sewage outfall, claiming that the seabed in a few kilometres radius of the area is a desert. You just can't shift this, this, this problem out further and, and, and be out of sight and, and out of mind. But we'll continue to require monitoring and we'll continue to require uh, the Hunter Water Corporation to investigate anything that uh, may contribute to these sort of things. A theory that cold sea currents picked up by satellite photography may have been responsible for the die-off have been discounted. Fish stocks have been declared safe for now. Despite coming up empty, the EPA is confident it remains a valid watchdog for such occurrences. We've responded in a way which we believe has been systematic and scientifically valid. Uh, the fact that we haven't been able to come up with a nice tight uh, answer doesn't necessarily mean that we haven't done everything that we should have done. Just as Australia's airline Qantas had its beginnings in small flimsy biplanes, so too did David Street. As an air cadet of 16, he clambered into a Tiger Moth aircraft for his first flying lesson. Forty years to the day and 16,000 flying hours later, David couldn't wait to get behind the stick of a Tiger at Rutherford Aero Club. David was taught to fly by an ex-World War II fighter pilot. He showed me the, 
niceties and the finesse at flying uh, one of these uh, de Havilland uh, aircraft. And uh, as they said, if you can manage one of these well, you can probably manage anything well. An appreciation for aircraft rubbed off on David's sons, Mark, Neil and Scott, all now flying instructors. They were there along with family and friends to help Dad relive his glory days of wind in the wires aviation. A lifetime of flying forgotten for just a few moments in the slipstream of a 1930s Tiger Moth. The Greens party is running five Senate candidates in the March the 13th election after deciding to enter mainstream politics last year and go national. Steve Brigham is number one on the Senate ticket and claims the Greens' popularity is growing more now because of a broader range of policies. It's not just trees, it's not just the environment, it's a whole new approach to, uh, to jobs, to public health systems, to international policies and such like. The Greens' slogan, the future is green, is meant to convey their belief that there is a way for the world to have jobs and a clean environment. Mr Brigham says that's why his group is a true alternative to Labour or the Coalition. They're both very economic rationalist, they're both advocating government pull out of what used to be considered essential services. The, the government's now leaving everything to the free market system, including things like health, transport, education. So the Greens represent partly an old view which is that government has a responsibility to meet in things like education and transport and health and also associated with that a new view that we need to protect the environment, that we can create jobs and have a clean planet. This was one roar of disapproval hard to ignore. 600 bikers and their machines from as far away as Victoria rumbled from southern Lake Macquarie to the rally in Walls End Park to rev up some opposition to member for Charlton, Bob Brown. While the riders gave their politics some momentum, traffic along the route sometimes came to a standstill. 
The bikers say they're especially angry with the Land Transport Minister about the compulsory display of headlights during the day because they claim it fails as a safety measure. So now the riders want to turn Mr Brown's political lights out. Well, I think he's forgotten that motorcyclists are voters. We're not treated as, as, as an equal human being in, in his eyes. He doesn't want to talk to us. There's no conversation, no conversation, there's no flow of communication. And he's just disregarded all our views all the way along. The riders are supporting independent Ryan Wilson to stand against Mr Brown. Well, the first thing we'll do is uh, beat Mr Brown, which would be good not only for the motorcyclists but for the people of Charlton who have um, languished in a safe seat for, since 1984. We're the people that are more concerned for our safety. We don't need people who don't ride to tell us how to do it.